You know, there are many things that are happening right now, and right now I want you to know that the heavens have been opened. And because the heavens are open, there's new songs, there's new things going on. And because the heavens are open, you know, God is moving quickly and rapidly. And, and there are things that, you know, when light shines in darkness, things are exposed. So you're going to find more exposure going on. You're going to find a lot more things begin to happen. You're going to find that what you thought was right was wrong. <laughs> there, because when light truly shines strong, you know, you can have a dim light, then you can have a strong light. You know, you can just turn on a light somewhere, but it just doesn't focus on certain areas. But I'm telling you right now, God's focus is on the body of Christ. Because in the beginning of the 2013, it was a year of rebuild. And we are in a year of rebuilding. And the purpose of rebuilding is preparing for His return. We are in the process of preparation for His return from this forth until He comes. And I truly believe that we are the generation of His return according to Scripture. So in this process of preparation, we got to understand also that the enemy is preparing too. And because the enemy is preparing with certain tactics and strategies and, and areas to try to stumble and cause division and try to bring fear. And, and what he's trying to do is really create open doors in our life. And one of the things that the enemy tries to do is in creating an open door of, uh, in our lives is so that he has access to me and you. Is everybody with me? So if he can get access to me and you, one of the things that he can do is cause an area of stumbling. He can cause an area of discouragement. He can cause all kinds of things in our life that cause us to agree with the voice of the enemy and not even realize it. Amen. So would you grab your swords this morning? I'm going to um, take an offering after our word this morning. Because I think it's important that we have our word this morning. And go to Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You know, God wants to exalt His body, doesn't He? But he want, one of the things he wants us to do is purify his body. And so what he's beginning to do is he's exposing certain things that are unclean. He's exposing certain things that are defiling. He's exposing areas so that, that prevent division. I mean, that uh, promote division so division can be prevented. One thing he desires is unity, oneness. He wants us to be like-minded with him, doesn't he? So that we're like-minded with one another. And in Proverbs 26 and verse 1, would you read it with me? As snow is in the summer and rain in the harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. A fool is an individual that is not willing to do what God is requiring him to do. Because he's full of pride or arrogance and lust and so forth. In verse 2, let's speak it. Like a flit, flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without a cause shall not alight. In other words, a curse without a cause has no effect. Everyone say that with me. A curse without a cause has no effect. So there are things that a curse. Now, what is a curse? A curse is, an, is, an, is like a legal document. It's a legal document that allows demons and demonic influence to infiltrate your life, your body, your health, your finances, your marriages, and your children. This is what a curse does. The Word says that you and I were born with a curse. Because we were born as offsprings of darkness. So we were already born with a curse. What do you think? Is death a curse or, or a blessing? It's a curse. So everybody is born with the curse. What's the curse? Curse of death. And there are things that we've inherited. Things that we've opened the doors to. So one of the things that we want to do is, now Jesus paid the price for me and you to be set free of the curse of death, hell, and the grave. That's the price He paid. 
The other price he paid is that you and I could access and sever every other curse involved in our life. So remember that when we come to Christ, one of the things that we've done is we've repented for our sins. And if you've not repented today, I encourage you to. And if you don't think that you've sinned, you're deceived. Everyone sins. You sin in thought, word, or deeds. You sin in rebellion. You sin in doing your will instead of God's will. You sin in your thoughts. There's many areas that we sin. Sin is the presence of evil. So in other words, because we are impressed all around us because the ruler of this world is Satan and there's the presence of evil all around me and you. So we're always being influenced to sin. We're always being tempted in one way or another. So in this area of curse, one of the things that we want to be able to do is remove curses from our life. And by removing a curse from your life, you first must find the root or the cause of the curse. So, in other words, when you repent for something, it doesn't mean that you are free. It means you're forgiven from doing it. Does everybody got it? In other words, repentance uh, activates the blood of Christ in our life so that we can access to be free. Amen? So many people just think that, well, if I repent, I'm free. Well, no, that's not true. And the Word doesn't say that. So you and I repent. We are washed from our sins, from the things that we've done. Amen? But in this area, there's now it's allowed us access to be free. And this is one of the things that we are talking about today. Repentance. Listen. Curses are removed in the area because a curse allows a demon in your life, a disembodied spirit. He operates now. And spirits get fed by emotion, but they access through curses. So when the spirit has accessed us through a curse, one of the things we want to do is find the cause of the curse. When you find the cause of the curse, you expose it by repentance. And the next thing you do is you remove the spirit. That means we have to cast out the demon from the curse, from that area. That's our responsibility. In fact, in Mark 16, 16, the Bible tells us, let's go there right now. Mark 16, 16. So in this area of curse, again, these demons have a legal right to your soul and your body. And your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your imaginations. They will have an legal access not only to those, but also your health, your finance, and your destiny. Many people's destinies are altered by a curse. And Mark 16 and verse 16, would you read it with me? He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. The word believe here means to follow. That's why Jesus said, follow me. Amen. Verse 17. It says, and these signs will follow those who believe. He said, in my name they will what? Cast out demons. It's the first thing he speaks about. Why? Because those are the things that are going to hinder you. The presence of evil is the presence of a demon or a spirit. A demon is a disembodied spirit. And we have many teachings on this. And I encourage you to go to the teachings that says demons. You'll know where they came from and how they influence. They once had a body and those bodies have been removed from them and now they are disembodied spirits looking for another one. So they're looking for a host. And it says, these signs will follow in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And these are people who follow. These are people who are baptized in the Holy Spirit with power. Again, I want to go back to the area of these curses. One of the things that uh, allows curses in our life is what we call open doors. Everyone say open doors. And one of the things we want to do is expose the open doors in our life so that they can be shut. 
and no spirits can be removed. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Hallelujah. In verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. You know, so many times in our life, we didn't even realize that we saw a demon. And we just thought it was our imagination. You might have saw a shadow out of the corner of your eye. You may have sensed a presence that brought fear to you. All of a sudden, boom, fear. You may have sensed something that just began to promote lust to you. Begin to hinder you in a certain way. That's the presence of evil. Those are spirits that all of a sudden, they show up out of nowhere. You may have quit drinking. You may have quit smoking. You may have quit all of these things. All of a sudden, that urge comes on really strong. And it's like, well, what's it trying to do? Tempt you to go back again. Because of that spirit. Now, there's a difference of having a curse where a spirit is in you or being tempted outside where a spirit is trying to access you. In fact, the word tells us that when a house, a temple is cleaned up, that the spirits that left them come back with stronger spirits to try to re-enter them. So even though that there's a war going on, your battle's not over, is it? So it's our responsibility to make sure that these spirits do not access us again. That's why people backslide. That's why people go back to using drugs. Either the spirit never left them or they never got rid of the spirit. There's a difference between demon management and freedom. And we don't promote demon management here. You want demon management, go to a 12-step program. Or go to some secular doctor or whatever who can put you on medication and then you can manage your demons for a period of time. But eventually they'll have to have a full course meal and you won't be able to control them. But again, this is about freedom, not demon management. Amen? In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3, would you read it with me? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the... In other words, we walk in the natural realm, but we don't war according to the natural realm. It says, for the weapons of our warfare, everyone say warfare, warfare. are not carnal or fleshly or common sense. <laughs> but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Strongholds are areas where demons have accessed. Stronghold is a memory lie also. So if you've accepted a lie, a demon has access to you. Does everybody got it? Many of us have been brought up in certain areas where labels have been pl placed upon us and we've just accepted them because we were ignorant. When we were a child, we might have been said that you were a mistake that affected you. That you were unworthy that affected you. Those things open doors. Rejection opens doors. There's many things that open doors in our life that the enemy waits. Why do you think he goes after the children first? Because they are the innocent one. He goes after the young children as soon as possible. When a child is molested, it opens a door. Even though it's not the child's fault, it still opens a door. And later on, it, it affects that child in life. But there again, there are many open doors in our life that we must expose, go to the root, renounce it, and get rid of it. Amen? Or you'll constantly be hindered by it, and you'll try to manage it instead of being free from it. It says, verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, the enemy can access you by you just agreeing with what he says. 
The Bible says when two touch and agree, it comes to pass. So the devil will come up to you and say, you have this, you this, you that. And you can agree with him. And that will open the door for the enemy to access you. Has everybody got this? Literally, very, very, very important to understand this so that you and I shut doors in our life. That's why it's important to ask yourself, who told me that? Who's telling me that? Is this what God says to me? Is this what God is speaking about me? If God ain't saying that about you, then the devil is. Amen? And if you're going to agree with it, he's going to access you. Now, that may sound strange to many people. But the Bible tells us that the devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And when, especially when you begin to want to know truth, as God begins to draw you, the devil knows he's drawing you to his truth. The devil knows that God has drawn you to fulfill his will. He's drawing you to come out of your will and to fill the will of God. That you may stand before him and you will hear him say, Enter in my good and faithful servant. Again, strongholds are memory lies in open places of demonic activity, and you may do it unknowingly. Again, the devil does not come up to you every day and tell you what he's going to do. Amen? It says that he is the father of all lies. In John 10, John chapter 10. Hallelujah. In verse 1, John 10, verse 1, let's speak it together. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up another way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them. Leads them where? Out. And when he brings them out, his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the stranger. Let me share something with you. You become born again by the Spirit of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. You begin to realize that the voices that you are listening to are known as the stranger's voice. So you've known the stranger's voice, but now you're going to be led by the voice of God. And the voice of God brings impressions. The voice of God brings vision. The voice of God brings truth. The voice of God will visit you in dreams and visions. The voice of God leads you out of all temptations. He brings you through when you're in a struggle. He always leads you. But it's important to start with prayer because without prayer, then, then how you won't know. That's where you make connection all the time. You make connection every day. You must be one that is willing to pray and one that's willing to warfare. I'm going to say that again. One that's willing to pray and one that's willing to warfare. Again, the first thing that you must overcome is yourself so you can pursue your enemy. Amen? Jesus is the door. We're to know his voice and know the voice of the stranger which tempts us so that we can say no to that temptation. Amen? In fact, it says, blessed is the man or woman who endures temptation. In other words, is not a let, led astray by temptation. Go to Genesis chapter 4. Jesus is the door. But there is a door that the enemy wants to open in your life. And that's the door to your soul, your body, your health, and your destiny. In Genesis chapter 4. In 
open doors. You know, we have a deliverance part of our ministry where individuals go through a process and they begin to go through the process and the teachings that expose open doors in their life. And as they expose the open doors in their life, they begin to renounce them. They bring them to the Bible says, bring the hidden things of shame to light. And they begin to bring them to light. And before they get prayed for, in fact, they begin to uh, begin to make confessions on these things and repent them and command the, these spirits to go before they even get prayed for. Most of the spirits are gone before we even get to pray with them. But there are some spirits that need to be prayed out more than just cast out. And Genesis chapter 4. Is everybody there? In verse 3. It says, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock in, in their fat. And the Lord respected Abel in his offering, but he did not respect Cain in his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, Will you not be be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin what? Sin what? Lies at the door. In other words, the presence of evil is knocking at your door. What's he trying to do? Get you to what? Open it. He's certainly not trying to get you to lock it. He's trying to get you to open the door so he can access your soul, your body, your mind, your will, emotions. Your destiny. Has so everybody got this? And it says that, first of all, I truly believe that the door is already open because he was agreeing with anger. Anger will open the door. And the Lord was exposing it. He said, why are you angry and why is your continence fallen? In other words, when the Spirit's got ruling you, your continence changes. When we do deliverance with people, let me tell you, sometimes they're their, their continence changes. Those spirits come up. I remember one day we were just in a prayer group and we were praying for people. Oh, no, we were, just we were just praying and interceding. And the Lord said to me, I want you to go over and anoint this woman's feet. I said, anoint her feet? He said, yes. Man, when I went over to anoint her feet, her whole face continence changed. It was like, and all of a sudden this voice came out of her and said, I'm going to kill her. I'm thinking, I know that ain't her speaking. <laughs> and this spirit was boasting and how it had killed her family and from the last 30 generations. And she was Jewish. It was a spirit of murder. And I was a baby in crisis. And this was actually one of my first encounters with demonic forces. And I think my wife and I were about three or four months old in, in Christ, and this was happening at my house. And the only thing I needed to do, knew what to do is what the Word said, get rid of it. So we began to cast demons out of her, and that spirit left. And there was about 30 others that left her. And she began to get freer and freer. But there was a process because there were some other deep-rooted ones that needed a little bit more process and exposing. But she got freed up tremendously. And my wife and I were praying, and we were like, we were like doing tag team. I was getting tired. <laughs> in fact, there was this one spirit that came up. Ah, this was incredible. This one spirit came out and said, he came up and said, uh, oh, no, no, where will I go? He said, where will I go? And I thought, oh, yeah, where will you go? And I thought, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Man, yeah. that thing was deceiving me. I said, I, you, I know where you're going to go out in the name of Jesus and go back to the pit. That yeah, soulish little thing. Try to get, see, try to manipulate me. But thank be to God, I had the spirit of the living God because he would have. <laughs> so in this, again, one of the things we want to do is that the enemy is, he's knocking all the time. Can I come in? 
who's there? You know, <laughs> look, and if you're in a knock at the wrong door, you know who's there. Hallelujah. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. You know, television has defiled deliverance incredibly. They got all this exorcist stuff going on. And they got all these idiots that are going in haunted houses and, and they're going through all these rituals and don't even use the name of Jesus. And they think that the spirits have left when they just have shut up. Only in the name of Jesus and through the blood of Christ can a demon obey you. But yes, television is definitely, you know, they use all of these things. I mean, it's just incredible. And it kind of irritates me. I'm thinking, man, they're going through all this stuff. Just, just I want to get in there and tell them, come out in the name of Jesus. But they go through all of these rituals and all of these things. And you know, even in the, um, in some of the Christian movies, you'll see demons be exposed. Or you'll see people playing, praying, but not many. You won't see tongues being manifested. You won't see demons being cast out. In many of the Christian movies. Why? Only a few will you see that. Because even the enemies infiltrated the, the body of Christ. And trying to dilute the power of Christ. They try to dilute it. Well, I'm telling you that the power of Christ, the Bible says that the gates of hell cannot come against the anointing. And you know what? As a man thinks, so he is. So if you think that way, you'll be that way. But if you think and know that he who's in you is greater than he is in the world and that no weapon formed against you and that you have the power and authority and that a heaven is behind you, there's nothing impossible. Nothing. But you're always being impressed by the things of the world by the things that you see, by the things that you hear, which open doors. In Ephesians chapter 4, is everybody there? Glory. Verse 25. Open doors. We're going to expose some open doors. Therefore, put away what? Lying. Is lying an open door? Oh, you betcha. Put away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and do not what? Sin. There's nothing wrong with righteous anger. Be angry, but do not sin. And do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor what? Nor give place to the devil. How? Look at you give place to the devil by allowing that door to be open. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Come on, read it with me. Verse 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Whoa! You don't think you, what you speak is going to open the door? Amen. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking put away from you with all malice. Why? Because these will open doors. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So again, these are open doors. Amen? In Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20. Verse 4. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Exodus 20. Verse 4. Let's speak it together. You shall not make for yourself a 
carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Again, this is an area where there are ancestral curses. These are ancestors that have sinned and brought a curse on the family line. They allow demons to come in the family line. So <clears throat> when you have a loved one that passes, those demons that are in them are looking to access somebody else in the family line. That's why many people have been bound by drugs or alcohol or addiction because of the sin of the family line. When those spirits left them, they went down into another. Spirits of heart disease, cancer, diabetes. When you go to a doctor, one of the things the doctor says is, any heart disease, what is he doing? He's looking for something in the family line, isn't he? He's looking for something in the blood. What's in your family line? High blood pressure. All of these things are in the family line. Why? Because he's wanting to find out what he has to deal with right now but there's an area of spiritual family line because the bible says that life of the flesh is in the blood when a curse comes it affects the bloodline and that curse comes all the way down incest will produce children that have down syndrome so everybody got it incest in the family line all of these things, there are things in the family line that's called ancestral curses that need to be renounced, that need to be uh, exposed and repented for. Daniel was in captivity. He found the book of Jeremiah. He said, Lord, I don't get it. Why are we still here? It says that we're supposed to be set free 70 years. And the Lord said, nobody's repented for the sins of the forefathers. And when Daniel repented for the sins of the forefathers, they were free. Does everybody got it? So please understand, this is an area where the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. These are things that are not imaginary. These are not fictional. These are true. We see the fruits of all of these things in the outward arena in people's lives. But people are not willing to look beyond what they see. And it's our responsibility to make what is unseen to become seen so they can be exposed, removed, and you can live a life that is pleasing to God. Hallelujah. In Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Open doors. Hallelujah. Um, in verse uh, 22. And Jesus said, I do not say to you up to seven. Uh, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. In verse 21, then Peter came to him and he said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I what? Forgive him. How often, if my brother sin against me, shall I forgive him? What did Jesus say? And, and uh, uh, up to seven times he asked, and Jesus said to him what? I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. That's plenty of times. In other words, he gave it beyond. <laughs> so he's saying, forgive your brother no matter what. Now, okay, if you have a brother that's constantly doing stupid stuff, falling into fornication, doing this, doing that, whatever, you forgive him. But it doesn't mean you got to hang with him. Hello? I mean, you got to be wise about it. If he's out stealing and he's still using drugs, it doesn't mean you open your house to him. Hey, come on in. You know, I got to go out for a while. Why don't you watch it for me? 
you know it's going to be empty by the time you get home. You know, God does give us wisdom. Amen? So in this, please understand that forgiveness is required. The Bible says if you're not willing to forgive, God won't forgive you. Amen? And forgiveness, unforgiveness is an open door. Rejection is a root that causes a curse also. Rejection. Why? Because it brings an offense. People are easily offended because they've been rejected at some time. It, you know, and so many times I want to share this with you because this happened in a person's life or there's been a flawed belief system. Where there's a flawed belief system, there's a flawed perception. So sometimes people have a flawed perception that they're being rejected when they're just being spoken to or corrected. And in that perception, they always feel like they're being rejected. And that's because there is a presence of a demon there promoting that flawed perception. It's like you got to walk on eggshells around that person because no matter what you do, it seems like they're always going to say, oh, well, you, you did this, or, or they're going to feel like they're, you, they've been rejected. That is because there is demon there, a very strong demon there. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, on a, a, another area, especially in the area of rejections and so forth, uh, how you manage a trauma will determine how you allow a, a spirit in or not. Amen? Even in the area of rejection, how you handle that trauma. You can either react or respond. React towards the old man which opens the door or respond according to the new man of what Christ says. So how we manage these traumas determines whether demons get access or not. Disappointment is a big door. People have, because of the flawed perception, they have a flawed expectation. They have such outreach expectations. There's nothing wrong with expecting something. But your expectations must be reachable by God. Hello. Not that God can't do anything. He can. But there are some expectations that people have that are just way out there. I was counseling with someone and the person was expecting to be reconciled to their spouse. Well, everything's in God's time. But you don't put your hope on that. You put your hope on the Lord. Come to find out this expectation to be reconciled to the spouse. Well, the spouse was remarried. That's a ridiculous expectation. So what are you going to do? Promote divorce for this person so they can come back to you? That's a flawed expectation. Hello. <laughs> and that will open the door. Disappointments open the door if you allow it. Again, how you handle the traumas will either allow you to shut the door or open it. When things don't go your way, are you going to cuss, curse, and all the other stuff? Well, you just opened the door. And there's a presence of evil there. How about vows? This is something very powerful. A vow. The Bible says to fulfill your vows. Fulfill your vows. When you do not fulfill a vow, you bring a curse. Why? Because you lied. One day the Lord said to me, he said, Guy, I want you to repent for all of your unfulfilled vows. I said, whoa. And I did. I put it under the blood, I repented, and I cast every spirit associated with it. How about tithing? The Bible says those who don't tithe bring a curse on themselves. He said, you, you rob God. So that opens the door to demonic activity, doesn't it? Amen? So these vows and tithes and, 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 and even covenants that you've made with people. You know, one day the Lord shared with me about, because when I was younger, me and this one guy, we made blood brothers. You know? The Lord said, repent from that because you just, you mixed your blood with his blood and you brought a curse on you from his family line. Whoa. What about fraternities? Sororities? organizations 
Masons. All of these. Let me share something with you. Any organization that says it has a way of God without salvation through Christ Jesus is a cult. So everybody got it? Any religious or faith supposedly believing organization that says that they have a way of God without salvation through Jesus Christ is a lie. It's a cult. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And it will open the door. Well, my father was a mason. Will you inherit the curse? So you need to break that off and renounce it and repent for his sins. First Corinthians chapter six. And you, you may have these thoughts, well, I don't believe these things. That's because the spirit that's in you doesn't want you to be free. Because this is the word of God and this is truth. I'm not speaking out of something that I just conjured up. This is the word of God and this is truth. I've experienced it, I've seen it, and I've been free. And there's a difference. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In verse 8, let's speak it together. Now you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor extortioners, nor drunkards, nor revelries will inherit the kingdom of God. These are all areas that open the door to demonic activity in your life. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things for me all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. In other words, when you're brought under the power of these things, there is a presence of demonic influence and because you've allowed a curse to be activated. In Galatians chapter 5, You know, I was watching the news the other day and there was this, I think it was a senator or something. And uh, he found out that his 21-year-old son was gay. Of course, he's, he's, he's all flustered and upset, discouraged, you know. He can't believe that this could happen. And he's working through it. But you know what? He doesn't know the truth. He doesn't know that his son is a demon. And a curse has been opened because of what his son's agreed with. Or it came down the family line. Because of, you know, children that are molested at a young age. Those spirits enter them. Homosexual, lesbian. They enter them even though that they were innocent. It wasn't their fault. But this is how the devil is. He attacks the innocent. He has no respect of person. He wants you under his control no matter what. And he was all upset. And this guy, I thought, man, I hope you go to a place that knows the truth where that spirit can be removed. We have many testimonies of people who have been involved in a certain lifestyle and God has freed them. But you've got to want to be free. You've got to have an open heart and an open mind to receive what the Spirit says. You've got to want to be free. You can't hope to be free. You must want to be free. And then in this wanting to be free, you go get free. 
Amen? In Galatians 5 and verse 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Is anybody read with me? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. This sorcery means drugs. H hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and alike. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because these are open doors of demonic activity, and they will take you out. They will take you out of the will of God and move you right out of salvation. Is everybody okay? In Deuteronomy 18. You know, even the Bible says that rebellion is a form of witchcraft. Well, that's an open door then, isn't it? Deuteronomy 18. Verse 9. Let's speak it together, please. When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes him his son or his daughter pass through the fire. Or one who practices what? Witchcraft. You know, there are many forms of witchcraft. In fact, there are many traditions that are in our family lines that are actually witchcraft. All kinds of things. I remember they, they would try to figure out which way uh, uh, when a mother was pregnant, uh, whether it was a boy or girl, they would do something, I don't know, with a needle or whatever, I don't know. And it'll go a certain way. And and it's witchcraft. People go to soothsayers and all of these things. And they think that they have a gift from God. But that gift is from the devil. Or one who practices witchcraft. Or soothsayer. Or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer. Tarot cards. Games that are out there. There's many games that are involved in, in children's lives, like Pokemon, which means pocket monster. And many games, many of these video games are demonic, dragons and so forth. Those are all demonic. They open doors to kids' lives. And their parents wonder why. And they go to church, but they're ignorant of these things. One who conjures spells. How about horoscopes? People go to the read the horoscope every morning. Let's see, this is what's gonna I'm gonna be like today. That is demonic. That opens the door to the devil to you. And then you begin to rely on that. There's only one that tells you your future, and that's the word of God. That's it. When you go to restaurants, especially you go over to a Chinese restaurant and you open the fortune cookie, people read those things and believe them. You just opened yourself up to another curse. One who conjures spells or medium or a medium or a spirit is, or one who calls up the dead. Listen, you're still speaking to mom and dad. Forget it. Who are passed away. If you're still praying to your aunts and uncles. Now, I'm not saying God can't visit. Can't, you, somebody can't visit you in a dream. Because the Lord will get your attention. Amen. People have seen their family members or whatever. I remember I was doing an outreach one day and I kept, and I was in this car and we were cruising and the people in the back seat were just praising God and I didn't know who was in the back seat and we were going to the college and preaching. And I got to the college, I got out of the car and I was running around and grabbing people and shaking them, telling them, you don't belong here, he's coming soon. You don't belong here. I was shaking everybody, telling them Jesus was coming and the people were cheering on and cheering on and I looked to finally find out who was in my back seat and they were my aunts and uncles who had passed away. But I don't talk to them. 
And I certainly don't write them letters. And I don't ask for their counsel. We do not communicate with the dead. Grandma's died. She's not communicado here at all. No communicado. Those are familiar spirits that appear to your room. Has everybody got it? Yes. I woke, was woken up and aunt whatever was in my room and spoke to me. Oh, really? Yes, an angel came and spoke to me and he told me I needed to go shoot somebody. Really? When something appears to you, you make sure you speak the blood of Jesus because if you agree with it, that curse comes on you. Has everybody got it? People go to seances and all kinds of things to try to speak to whomever to find out. Look, at your information is in the Spirit of God. It's in the Word of God. You don't have to search out anything else or you open the door. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Verse 12. It says, for all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out before you shall be blameless before the Lord your God. Wow. In Deuteronomy 7, while we're here, we must confess these open doors and cast out the demons from them. Deuteronomy 7, 25. It says, You shall burn the carved images of their gods with fire. You shall not covet the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared by it, for it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Nor shall you bring any abomination into your house lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. Many people have accursed items in their home. And that brings a curse on that house. But I inherited it from 14 generations. Well, it's got dragons on it. It's got uh, skulls on it. What do you think skulls and crossbones mean? Health? It means death. It's amazing. I run in a, listen, I got a chopper. I like to ride the bike. It was a blessing from the Lord. We have on a Christ the King. I go to Christian events and these dudes are showing up with choppers that have skulls, crossbones, and demonic stuff, half dressed women on their bikes. That's an accursed item. They're out there doing tattoos and all kinds of other stuff. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And they wonder why all of these things are happening in their life. They're out there huffing cigarettes like it's no tomorrow. Cigarettes are an accursed item. It opens the door. Amen. Joshua 7. Yes, I'm a Christian and I huff and drink. I'm okay. No, you're not okay. I've been addicted 40 years and I'm free. Oh, no, you're not. You're still a huffer. You're still drinking. Ah, a little here, a little there. Yeah, your littles open doors. It only takes a little crack. Look at the devil as a legalist. He's looking for any open door. You can justify reason and compromise all you want. But you better step back and check out what's going on in your life. How's it working for you? Joshua chapter 7, verse 11. The Lord says, Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things, and they have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. Hello. Why? Because the enemy's in the camp. 
but turn their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed items from among you. Wow. This is the word of God. What's in your house? People show up with clothing that have demonic logos on them. Christians they have demon. I went to a meeting. I went to a pastor's meeting, and and it just blew me away. And and, and this pastor shows up with this black shirt, and it's got this demonic sh logos on it, skull cross. I'm like, what? What accountability? We're to know the truth. The truth by practicing the truth sets us free. Look at the devil's looking for anything to access me and you. And if we don't get rid of it, it goes to our children and they inherit it. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. In verse 28, verse 28, let's speak it together. Is everybody all right? In verse 19, 28, Leviticus, you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. You know what the big thing today is? Cutting yourself. There's a bunch of cutters. It's a lie. It's a worship of Baal. People don't even realize it. They cut themselves. They have cutting parties. And it's supposed to make them feel good. What makes them feel good is because the demon isn't tormenting them and he stops while, they're, while you're bleeding until you stop. And then he torments you again until you start cutting yourself. And that's all it is. It's a shedding of blood to worship demons. And the demon is in the person. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. I am the Lord. Tattoos. So if you've ever gotten a tattoo, what you do is you repent for that tattoo. You break the curse off of that too, and you command that, tat that spirit to leave you. That's what you do. God forgives. But it's our responsibility to expose the root and get rid of the spirit. Amen? In 2 Timothy chapter 1. Bear with me a few more scriptures. But I want to get this across so we know. Because it's time to shut doors. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, For God has not given us a what? Spirit of fear, a spirit of fear, a spirit of fear, fear. Fear is a spirit, amen? And it isn't from God. But of power, love, and sound mind. So when the spirit of fear comes, it nullifies that sound mind. It nullifies love and power. Is everybody okay? And one of the, you know, Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. He manipulates and controls people by fear. He, why? He can prevent a person from doing something by keeping them from in fear, doesn't he? And then what happens in the world is people get on medication for oppression. Oppressed. When the people are oppressed, it's because it's the spirit of oppression. People get on medication because of uh, uh, their low self-esteem and all of these other things. They take Xanax and, I don't know, Roxy's or whatever. I don't know. They take all kinds of medication to try and control or, or hype up their spirit, but they're not really hyping up their spirit at all. In fact, if you read the side effect of it, it's called suicide. 
So would God give you something to kill yourself? No. Hallelujah. <laughs> In Romans chapter 1. What is the stuff they put kids on? Ritalin? You know how many kids are put on Ritalin? When they're just going through a stage of growth as a child? So they put the kid on Ritalin and not allow that child to develop. And it causes a lot of mental problems when that child is older because the child was put on Ritalin at a young age. I'm telling you, the doctors just want to pop a pill to everybody. They promote it on TV all the time. Are you dealing with this? You can't sleep here. Take one of these. You'll see butterflies. Here, you want more sex? Take one of these. But the side effects are, and they real go, go real quick. In fact, the side effects are longer than the commercial. But they move real fast. Make sure you consult your doctor. Yeah, your doctor's in cahoots with the medical system. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 1, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, us, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice it. So when you approve of somebody who's practicing it, you receive a curse too. Everybody got it. Now just think about this. And and this has got nothing to do with the person or whatever. I just want to, I want you to be, I want you to understand. So if you vote for someone that promotes abortion and same-sex marriage, it means you approve of it. You've received a curse. And there's blood on our hands. Does everybody get this? So you better be careful who you vote for. Because right now we have a president that has denounced this country as being Christian. He promotes same-sex marriage. And he promotes abortion. He is cursed. And anyone that voted him in office is also cursed. And anyone of his... Tis, what are you, constituents? <laughs> Any one of his cohorts that agrees with him is cursed. Has everybody got it? So how can you be a Christian and proclaim to be a Christian and yet vote for something that defiles God? Then you're really not a Christian. Because your job, your money, and your position is more important than pleasing God. That's incredible to me. It, it just baffles me. It blows me away. Why doesn't anybody read the Bible? Don't they know the truth? Is there really no relationship? This is why this country is in such a mess. Because it's now run by a curse. 2 Corinthians or 2 Timothy chapter 3. But praise be to God. God's got us here for a reason. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Oh, aren't you glad you came to learn today? <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. No kidding. Why? 
Because things are being ruled by curses. For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Lovers of what? Money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Why? Because it's a curse. Now, the money's not a curse. It's a person who loves money more than God. Amen? Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of God, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying his power from such people turn away. Hello. Why? Because they are cursed. Amen? But God is trying to expose things, isn't he? I'm telling you, it's a time of rebuild. If you knew Jesus was going to be here in seven days, what would you do? You have seven days left. What would you do? Don't tell me. Tell him. <laughs> Again, the Bible tells us, and you don't have to go there, Matthew 19.5, it talks about that a, a, a man and woman come together in marriage, they become one flesh. And let me tell you, if you've had sex out of marriage, all the curses on the person you had sex with is on you. Those are called soul ties. And that needs to be broken, repented. Again, what you speak in Psalm 141, I just want to go there for one minute, and then we got one scripture and we're done. Psalm 141. You mean all the people I slept with, I got all the curses on me? Yes. Yes. Those are demons. Remember, a curse allows the demon in you. Psalm 141. That's why people stalk people. Demons. In verse 1, let's speak it together. Psalm 141. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense. And let the lifting of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my what? My mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips and do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked things with men who work iniquity and do not let me eat their delicacies. Look at what he says in verse 5. Let the righteous strike me. It shall be a kindness. And let him rebuke me. It shall be an excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it. For still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. And I'm going to close at Revelation 3. Hallelujah. Amen. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 19. Revelation 3, verse 19. Let's speak it together, please. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So let the Lord dine with you. Amen. By shutting the doors to evil, lust, perversion, pornography, and all those other foolish things. Not open the door to the enemy, but open the door to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I want to thank everyone here for, and all of our viewers for listening today. And again, for more teachings, that they can go to the Eternal Library at uh, eternallibrary.org.
I want to prepare our hearts for communion. And while we're doing communion today, you can bring your offerings and tithes up. Lord, we are honored and blessed for your word and let your word go forth and penetrate our spirit, soul, and body. Bring conviction, bring counsel, bring correction, bring repentance, and bring exposure that those hidden things of shame can be exposed and removed from our life, that we can walk in true freedom called total freedom in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now I want to thank all the listeners and the viewers. And for more teachings and resources, please visit us at theeternallibrary.org. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and heal you and uplift you because you're a new creation in Christ. And old things have passed away and all things are made new in Christ Jesus. <laughs>